Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I'm a second year chemistry student at Imperial College of London on an integrated master's course. With the current pandemic and no open days available for the foreseeable future, I thought I would try to make a few videos to give you more information about Imperial, as well as what it's like to study chemistry, to help with your decision making, be it whether to accept an offer, to apply to this university, or if chemistry is the right subject for you. So my current plan is to make three videos. This video will be about the Imperial experience in general, the gender ratio, accommodation, study areas on campus, workload, as well as social life. See the description below for timestamps if you want to skip anything you're uninterested in. The second one I'm planning to make will be about how studying chemistry at university is like, followed by a video about my university application journey and some advice. Feel free to leave any queries below in these videos, and if there are enough of them, I'll make a fourth Q&A video for you guys too. So I'm going to start this video off talking about the infamous Imperial Gender Ratio. Yes, it is true that in general, there are more male students at Imperial than female students. However, the ratio really depends department to department. For example, the engineering departments usually do have a lot more male students than female students. However, if you look at my department, chemistry, we actually have a 50-50 split between the two genders. Bio-related subjects, as well as medicine, also have a pretty even split between genders. So if you're applying to those departments, the crazy guy-to-girl ratio at Imperial really isn't that true. At Imperial, you're only at guaranteed accommodation in first year. So from second year onwards, most of us would apply for private accommodation, or become a hall senior to live in one of the first year halls. There are seven first year halls to choose from. So first off, Bite Hall. It's great because it's really near university. However, it does have higher levels of noise in comparison to other halls due to it housing the Union Bar. Next up, we have East Side Halls and South Side Halls. These two halls are right next to each other and on campus, which explains why it's pricier than other halls in general. So it's usually filled with overseas students. Therefore, if you want to have a better mix of overseas students as well as EU and UK students, then you might want to check other halls out instead. If I had a choice in the matter, I would probably have chosen Wilson House as my first year accommodation. Because it's walking distance from Imperial, but it's not as expensive as Southside or Eastside. And most of your route to uni would be through Hyde Park, which honestly, sounds really nice to me. However, if you don't feel like walking 30 minutes, then this might not be the hall for you. Since to get there by bus, it takes 40 minutes, and the only way to get there quicker than walking is to either bike or take the tube. Imperial says it takes 25 minutes to take the tube from Wilson House to Imperial. However, honestly, the tube always breaks down, so I don't believe that time. Next, we have the North Acton Halls. Kent Porter buildings, as well as Woodward buildings. These two are currently the newest Imperial Halls. These two halls are probably the most polarizing halls. People either hate it or love it. Love it because it's newly furnished, much cheaper than the other halls, as well as near the Westfield shopping mall in Shepherd's Bush. People hate it because it's really hard to travel to uni from North Acton. If you go by tube, you have to go on a central line, then change to a circle line. Or you could go on the central line and just get off a station early then walk to university. However, both require using the central line which often has red signal failures or just breaks down entirely. Going by bus is probably less stressful, however, if you travel during peak hour, you'll inevitably be stuck in traffic. So it's really hard to plan when to leave your accommodation so that you can get to university in time. Also, I've heard that a lot of my friends were persuaded to apply for Woodward because of the kitchen photo, which you can find on the Imperial website. However, that's only true for one block in Woodward, so if you end up in either block A, B, or C, you won't have that view. Kent Porter Buildings actually isn't open yet, it's opening in September 2020. However, it's also in North Acton, so the travel problems are exactly the same as Woodward. Last but not least, Xenia. That's where I lived actually in first year. My experience of living at Xenia was pretty good in general. Due to its location in Waterloo, we got a lot of reasonably priced social events, as well as meals throughout the year. And the location of the hall was great for sightseeing since it's very close to tourist attractions such as the London Eye and the Houses of Parliament. However, I would always curse the location, especially if I was travelling to uni during peak hour, because honestly the queue 
to the tube station would be so long. The central library on the South Kensington campus is pretty cramped. There are five levels, however, because it's shared between all departments at the university, you can rarely find seats unless if you go really early or really late in the day. However, there is the opportunity for you to book the study room if you require it to do a group project with some friends. But usually, I would choose not to study in the library unless if I had to, because the chemistry department has a lot of study areas underground, which were newly refurbished. And I'm pretty sure every department has study areas in their own department building. And those study areas will less likely be occupied because they will only be open to the people who are in that department. If you ask any student at Imperial, I'm pretty sure we'll all agree on one thing, and the workload is no joke. In first year, mornings would typically be taken up by lab sessions, which take up 9 to 12 hours a week. If there were labs that week, all weeks would involve 6 to 8 hours worth of lectures in the afternoon, plus 2 to 3 hours worth of problem classes or workshops or tutorials. You would be expected to have reviewed 4 lectures worth of material before each workshop or problem class. And for almost every lab, except for some first year ones, you would be expected to either write a lab report or complete a coding assignment. The number of contact hours probably does sound pretty crazy, but that is to be expected for Imperial in general. From what I hear at most other departments, chemistry students have a pretty typical amount of work, with medics and engineering students having the most work at this university. However, this university does still have a pretty good social life despite it being a UK university with one of the worst student satisfaction scores due to its workload. Imperial has over 340 clubs and societies which you can join that take place in the evenings, over the weekend, or on Wednesday afternoons when we don't have any academic scheduled. Your department will also organize social events throughout term time, and there are lots of university societies you can join. As a fresher, I would say that the first two terms of university was quite chill, and often I would end up with a weekend free despite having joined two societies on the weekdays. However, as a second year, you will end up with less time to socialize, which I think is normal for most universities anyway. I hope me rambling about my university has been enough some help to you, and if you have any questions about anything I've said or anything I haven't said, then feel free to leave it in the comments below. Thanks for watching!